I'm Jen Jager, and today I'm going to show you how to use keyframes in your video leap edits. Keyframes are a powerful tool that can make your videos more dynamic. You can use them to animate graphic overlays like text, or even adjust your audio mixes, or take still product images and make them feel more like live action video. That's exactly what we're going to be doing with this project here. I have a series of still images, but I want them to feel more dynamic, and keyframes are going to let me do that. Now, keyframes can seem a little intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of them, they are a game changer. I'm going to start by teaching you how to keyframe audio because I think that's the easiest way to learn how they work. I'm going to start by keyframing the volume on this music cut that I've already applied to my project. My idea is that I want the music to fade in at the beginning and fade out at the end, and I'm going to achieve that using keyframes. So what I'm going to do is cue up my playhead to the very beginning of the music cut. And then I want to hit this diamond button here to add a keyframe. And you can see that red diamond now appears in my audio track. Now I'm going to focus on the volume button. And like I said, I want it to fade in. So I'm going to turn the volume all the way down to zero. Then I'm going to move a little bit further down in my timeline and I'm going to adjust the volume all the way up to let's say 80. And you'll see another keyframe has appeared. Once you add a keyframe on an element, like in this case on the volume of this music, every time I adjust the volume in a different part in my timeline, it's going to add a new keyframe. So now what I want to do is go toward the end of my timeline. And I want that music volume to stay at 80. But because I'm not making any change here, it's not automatically going to know to apply a keyframe. So I'm going to hit that diamond button again. So that means between my second and third keyframes, that volume is going to stay at 80. Now I want to fade it all the way down at the end, like we talked about. Let me zoom in on my timeline here, cue up my playhead to the very end, and I'm going to dial down that volume back to zero. And you can see that time it automatically created a keyframe for me. So think of it as having two different types of keyframes, right? There's the keyframes you make when you want to change the property of an element over time, like in this case, the volume of this music. And then there's what are called hold keyframes. Those are those two center keyframes where the value of that volume is not changing. And then I've added this fourth keyframe to bring that volume all the way back down. Typically, keyframes come in pairs. So now that you understand the concept of keyframes, let's do more with this video. I'm going to close up this music and let's focus on this first shot. I want to create a slow zoom in on this image. So I'm going to cue up my playhead to the very beginning of the timeline. I'm going to hit this keyframe button to create a new keyframe. Then I'm going to cue up my playhead to the end of this clip. And in the playback viewer, I'm going to use two fingers to scale up the shot of these two bracelets. You can see in my timeline, I've automatically added a new keyframe by doing this. Let me play it back from the beginning, and you can see that I've added a slow zoom to those bracelets. I'm going to continue to do this for the remaining shots in my timeline. So I'm going to select this next clip, cue up my play hit to the beginning, hit the keyframe button again, but this time I want to create a different move. My suggestion to you would not be to make the same move over and over on every single shot. That would be really boring. You definitely want to mix it up. So this time what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take two fingers, scale in on this bracelet, and I'm even going to rotate it just a hair. Then I'm going to cue my playhead to the end of the clip and straighten it back out and zoom out a little bit on the frame. So this one is rotating and zooming out. On this next shot, I'm going to add a keyframe and zoom in and pan up a little bit on the image, cue up my playhead to the end of the clip. And I don't have to create another keyframe, remember, because I already made one, and I'm just going to bring the image down to center frame. And on this last shot here, I'm going to cue up my playhead at the beginning, of course, hit that keyframe button and zoom way in on these bracelets, cue up my playhead to the end and zoom out. So now if we run through my timeline, you can see this looks so much more dynamic than just these still images, but we can do a lot more with this as well. I'm going to use keyframes to make some interesting transitions between these shots too. First, I'm going to start with a basic dissolve. So I'm going to click this white button in between the clips and select dissolve and the next one and the next one. So we've got basic fades in and fades out. Now I'm going to go back and look for the effects layers 
and I'm going to choose these rays. And now these arrays have been applied over my clips. I'm gonna click on this rays and select the highlight button. This allows me to choose what part of the rays animation I want to use in my video. And I want to select a part that's like really affected where I'm really seeing that light. Now I'm going to reposition the ray so it's perfectly centered over my transition, over my cut point between these two shots. And I want to use keyframes to make these rays fade in and fade out. So before I do that, I'll just play it back so you can see how abruptly they appear and disappear. So again, I'm going to cue up my playhead to the beginning of those rays, hit that keyframe, and then on the opacity line, I'm going to dial it down. I'm going to move down a little bit in my timeline and bring up that opacity to 100. Then I'm going to move even further down in my timeline, make my hold keyframe. Remember, we talked about hold keyframes. It's going to keep that opacity at 100 for that duration between those two keyframes. And then move down a little bit more in my timeline and dial it all the way down. So now we've taken just a basic dissolve transition and keyframed in a more interesting look. I am going to select that effect and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to move the duplicate down in my timeline over this transition. I'm going to hit the highlight again and I'm going to select a different part of that ray effect so it doesn't feel like the same effect over and over. Variety is super important when you're editing your videos. And then one more time, I'm going to duplicate that ray effect, long press, reposition it over the next transition, hit highlight and just select something else. All right, to finish this up, let's add some text and keyframe that too. So let's go back to our main menu and find the text tool. I'm going to modify the content of my text and I'm going to change this font. Let's select meow. And now let's change the color of this text and let's add a background to this text to really help it pop off the photo. Okay, now let's change the color. I'm going to hit the color swatch grab that eyedropper and pick a color out of my frame. A lot of this jewelry is gold, so I think I'm gonna go gold. And I'm going to grab the corners tool and really round out those corners so I get more of a pill shape. Then with two fingers in my playback window, I'm gonna scale this up. And I think I'm gonna bring down the opacity a little bit on that background and reposition this a bit. Now I'm gonna add another word of text to this, but I need to make it a separate element because I wanna use a different font. So we're gonna go back to the main menu, drop in another text box. I'm going to make the font Montserrat and we're going to make it black too. I'm going to shrink it down and I'm going to reposition and resize both of my text elements until I get them to a place where I'm happy with the way they look. I'm thinking though I want to go back and change the color of my second line of text. So let me do that. It's my prerogative to change my mind and I'm going to add a drop shadow to that as well. All right, now we're going to keyframe these two text elements. As you know, I've already got my composition where I want it. So I'm going to cue up my playhead to the middle of this first text that says quality, and I'm going to add a keyframe here, but I'm not going to change the position. Now I'm going to go backward in my timeline and reposition this text off screen. So the text is now going to fly in from the right between these two keyframes and then land in the spot where I wanted. And now I want to make a move on my craftsmanship text, but I want to make sure that my keyframes are all lined up. So I'm going to cue up my playhead to that second keyframe on the quality text, jump over to the craftsmanship text and add a hold keyframe. Then we're going to go back to quality, align our playhead with that first keyframe, and then jump back to craftsmanship. And I'm going to reposition it to the left of the screen. Now I know that my keyframes are all lined up. So the timing of my text is going to match. All right, let's make them fly out as well. I'm still on the craftsmanship text and I'm going to keep my playhead toward the end of that text. I'm going to add a hold keyframe, jump down further in my timeline, and then reposition that text to the right of the frame. Now I'm going to jump back to that prior keyframe, click over to the quality text, add a hold keyframe there, go back to craftsmanship, align my playhead with that last keyframe, jump back to quality and reposition quality. So now our text flies in and flies out. So now that we've got all of our keyframes placed, I want to change the way that the move feels. Right now it's linear, which means that the speed is going to be constant over time. But you can adjust this by looking for the ease button in this menu. And you can see these different easing options that you have. These graphs illustrate the curve of the ease movement. I'm going to go for this dramatic S shape. And now the movement of my text is much less linear. So to finish this up, I'm just going to copy and paste this text and change the contents. 
So that's how you use keyframes in Video Leap. They really give you an extreme level of control over your video projects. I love using keyframes. How are you gonna use keyframes in your videos? Let us know down in the comments and make sure to subscribe to this channel for more Video Leap tutorials.